What's going on YouTube? Geosner right here. So in today's video I have great news. For those of you interested in iOS 17 jailbreak on newer devices, a brand new proof of concept for a kernel vulnerability has been released. We're going to get into that in a second. This video is brought to you by Formikey, a software that allows you to remove the activation lock from devices that you bought second hand if it's an iPhone 10 or older, if it turned out locked and you were scammed on Facebook groups or eBay and stuff like that. It supports iOS 15 and 16. You can also turn off the camera sound. There is a free trial available for both Windows and Mac OS. It supports up to iOS 16.7 and there is also a 20% off coupon available down below. Definitely check the program out below. So yesterday out of the blue we got this in here CVE 2024-23208 and this one is a kernel vulnerability and it's a proof of concept for a kernel vulnerability. It says in here it's for Mac OS 14.0 up to 14.2.1 but what is more important iOS 17.0 up to 17.2.1 and if you go ahead here on my website on iDeviceCentral.com on iOS signing status, you can see that the latest version is iOS 17.3 at the moment, which is signed, but then iOS 17.2.1 is exactly the previous version. So this is for a very, very recent iOS version range. However, this is not an exploit, it's a proof of concept, a POC. So a proof of concept essentially means that the vulnerability can likely be exploited in the future. If you write an exploit for it, you would be able to trigger the vulnerability and use it for jailbreak purposes maybe, or whatever you want to do with it, but it's not the exploit itself, just the code to trigger the vulnerability to prove that is there. So somebody still needs to take this code to take this vulnerability and make a proper exploit for it. This is just one of the steps. So if you go inside this folder over here, it does say this. Here is a proof of concept only can be triggered from 14.0 to 14.2.1 on macOS. We can achieve a similar effect to fork for updating last bit on iOS by using the message send function in conjunction with SCM writes method to pass the file descriptor from one application to another. Kind of convoluted, but they do provide the whole code in here to trigger the vulnerability. Now this per se cannot be used for jailbreak purposes. This is just to trigger the vulnerability and prove that it is indeed there. Still, a developer skilled enough can take this vulnerability and do the proper research to write an exploit and possibly exploit it for jailbreak purposes. So it's a good idea to not update the iOS 17.3 because this one does patch the vulnerability. iOS 17.2.1 and lower is what supports this vulnerability. However, you should not update at all. Do not update if you're running a lower version. Do not do OTA delay or stuff like that. If you're running an older version, particularly iOS 16 point something, no matter what device you're on, it's a good idea to stay on iOS 16. iOS 17, if you're running an older version, that's great, that's better. If you're running a newer version, it's still good. Just don't update iOS 17.3 and just don't update in general. The usual adage in the community is do not update if you don't have to. Usually the lower the better. It may not be the case all the times, but history shows that usually staying on an older version is actually better. So yes, there you have it, a brand new kernel vulnerability working for iOS 17.0 up to 17.2.1, proof of concept released, no exploit yet. I'm going to keep you updated if we do get an exploit in the near future. So thank you for watching, I'm GSNow, till the next time, peace out.